Hi, I'm Dan, and welcome to Airbrush Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Aces and Eights, the Dead Man's Hand on this here guitar, some mini skulls and some textured background. To do that, I'm gonna be using the Custom Killer FX template by Art Tool for the Dead Man's Hand, the FX2 texture template by Gerald Menendez, and from Custom Shop, the eight mini skull set. So with that, I hope you like this content. If you do, consider subscribing. Hit that bell so you get future notifications. Check out all my Amazon affiliate links for all the products I'm using in this video. Leave me some comments, good or bad. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. And with that, let's get started. I'm gonna start off um, with the FX texture templates, again by uh, Gerald Menendez. Um, there's three of them. There's liquid trail, organic net, and square burst. All right, so off camera, um, I taped up the sides of the guitar with some masking tape. Um, I just want to protect the sides of the guitar, the neck of the guitar, because I'm going to be spraying my background on here. Um, I'm going to start off with the uh, texture templates from Gerald Menendez. There's three of them in that pack, as I said before, um, and I'm going to be using two of them. I'm going to be using the uh, Square Burst and the Organic Net. Um, the Liquid Trail, I'm not going to be using in this project. But again, this is a great texture set. I really like it. And so with that, let's get started. So uh, I have some illustration white loaded up my gun. Um, add a one-to-one -one mix with my 2013. It's been sitting for a while, so I'd like to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a backwash. Make sure I'm mixed. And uh, here we go. So, so what's cool about these stencils are, is that if you put them right up against like any stencil, you're gonna get more of a crisp line. You can hold them out a little bit away, get more of a, a softer edge. Now, one thing I do want to note, if you are up off your edge a little bit, you definitely want to keep your airbrush square to your template, okay? Because if you're angling, you're going to be shooting at, you know, and you may want that effect. I don't I don't really shoot for something like that, um, but you want to keep it square to your template. Now, if you're down straight on your thing, you, you could angle it. I don't recommend it. I always recommend keeping your airbrush square to your surface. And what's cool about this template is you can just keep overlapping it and moving it around and you just get really cool, you know, awesome effects with it. Now, there's something I would like to note. I mean, there are some people, I'm sure, that take this out of here, out of the, you know, the edges and just use it like that. I mean, I just chose to leave mine in. I don't feel there's a right or wrong way to go about it. I have texture templates like this that I took out of the border and ones I leave in. Eventually I might take it out, it's okay. Um, but I know I'm gonna get some feedback saying, no, oh, dude, you're doing it wrong. You don't even have it out of, uh, you know, have it, have it detached from the background. Again, I don't see it right or wrong. Let's keep painting.
All right, so as you can see, just playing around with the stencils, hitting them all different kinds of ways. Just come up, you know, with, be creative. Whatever you think feels right, looks right. I'm just going with the flow. I have no plan whatsoever with this background. Um, just playing around with the stencils, seeing what I think might look cool. Then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna take some other stencils and I'm gonna render on top of it. So let's go. All right, so what you can see here is I got my aces and eights uh, template all taped up here. Um, I have everything taped off, you know, the other templates around it uh, so I don't get any overspray. And the big thing, of course, when this is as close to the edge of the template, um, if I was to spray this, I would get an overspray edge here. So you want to make sure that everything is taped off the way you're just going to spray, get the spray in on your template because you are going to have overspray. Now, what I would like to note is um, now what I would like to do is um, in my head, I'm going to be doing kind of like a uh, just a black and white of some skulls and some flames but i want the um, aces and eights to be in color so in order to get them truly in color what i'm thinking about doing here is using an opaque white to color everything in because you know especially with the illustration colors i mean they're transparent just like the wicked colors are and by the way this is from wicked uh the wicked line the, the opaque white is what i'm using here um because they're transparent and you kind of got a bluish gray background, it's really going to be hard to color over, you know, with the red. Now, the black obviously is going to cover, um, but you got some red in here too. So I'm just going to make everything a nice opaque white. I'm going to start from there and then I'll do my coloring from there. Here we go. Keep everything, again, keep your airbrush at a nice 90 to everything. Don't be shooting this way and underneath. You know, blowing your template up. Make nice light passes. Don't try to get too heavy all in one pass. Again, not so crucial on what you know is going to be black, but what is going to be red. I like to give it a nice even coat though for everything. Um, again, don't rush it. Take your time. Again, build it up in light coats, okay? Because if you try to go too hard, too fast, or too much, too fast, it will bleed underneath. And you know, because it's going to it's going to build up, and your air from your airbrush is going to blow it underneath. So, just like anything when you're airbrushing, just build it up in nice, easy, light coats. Take your time with it. No rush. Hopefully you can see that. Now it looks like we got a nice base of white on everything. Um, and again, I was really looking, uh, making sure that where my reds are gonna be, it's nice and opaque. So you get that nice full red. So, uh, all right, well, we're gonna switch over to red and black and uh, we'll go from there. All right, what I got mixed up in here is a Wicked Red. Um, I had Scarlet in the illustration colors, but I just wanted a red for this, so I must be out. Order some more, so I uh, went with the Wicked Red. It's not a, it's not a big deal. Um, I use both, Wicked colors or uh, illustration. So here we go. I will note I'm trying to be careful here, and I mean I probably could take these off, but I'm gonna see what happens. But I don't want the overspray to be getting in on the edge of the cards, so I'm taking a little bit more care this time than I did with the black.
And if you do get a little bit of red or whatever in there, we can come back there and touch that up a little bit later. Not a big deal. See what we got. So far, that's what we have. Okay. Um, you can take a look at it and see if you want to crisp anything up or anything at that point. You see, I got a little red overspray in here. We'll touch that up. Um, basically, this is just getting you the outline. Okay. We could always come back in and you know we're going to be painting these things white, obviously, um, and we're going to get it on our red and our black. We're going to come back in later and we're going to just sharpen them right back up. So this is just a template um, and for uh, the, the base of what we're gonna be doing. Okay, so I jumped ahead a little bit in the painting here. You can see where I fogged in the cards. Um, I'm going to be placing four skulls. Um, just right now, I'm just gonna do them in white. I'm planning on to put some skulls in here, drop them into some flames or some uh, smoke flame. I'm really not sure yet. I uh, just wanna tell you that I'm using the custom shop mini skulls. So I'll pop a link down below for those. Um, so I picked out four of the smaller skulls that I like, and I'm just gonna fog them in here with white. Then continue laying out uh, my background, my bases. Now I don't gotta get all of these you know, really filled in. I just want to know where they're going to be for now. And as you can see, I'm using my transfer tape. You can see it's very light pack. It just peels right off. No worries about taking any of your paint off. Um, but you definitely do want to use that so you don't get a line from your template. You know, it's really amazing how sometimes things just work out for you. I mean, I'm looking here and I, I did some really tight texture right here with my background uh, when I was putting this in and it's, it's going to work out. It, it kind of looks, it's going to work out really nice for, uh, I like to texture my, st uh, my skulls a little bit. But again, these aren't going to be really detailed skulls because they're going to be part of the flame. So I start laying in the flames, just sketching them in. Now, at first I wasn't real happy the way they were coming. They looked a little too, you know, generic. So just kept layering and building texture between the flames and the skulls and around the cards. Now, once I got to a certain point, um, this still looks a little hazy. So I pulled out my fire template, pulled out some black and sharpened everything up and put some finishing touches on everything. All right, I taped all of this up offline. I didn't want to waste your time with it. But I do want to mention about taping, uh, you do want to tape everything. The first time I've done this, I just put a rim of, you know, masking tape around the edge. You want to kind of peel it back a little bit, you know, it's not sticking up on your surface. And I thought I was good. Um, well, that's not the case. So basically what I did was I put, a, you know, just a little towel over here. Thought, well, so I don't spray the neck of the guitar. Well, I'll tell you what, that overspray got everywhere. Okay, so I learned really quick that overspray, whatever it can get to, it will. Okay, so, um, especially if you're spraying with an, uh, an automotive gun. Now, I will say something about automotive clears. I have automotive clears sitting right over there. 
I'm not gonna spray this with an automotive clear because I wanna show you how you can do this with a very good you know, clear. Um, this one happens to be by Krylon. I'm sure there's other good ones out there, not sponsored by Krylon in any way. Um, but I get this over at my automotive store and I'm sure it's available at other stores too. But um, I really do like this particular you know, clear. So you wanna get a good clear in a can if you're gonna go with a can. But I'm gonna show you how to do it this way because not everybody has access to, you know, automotive guns or, or spray equipment or even you know automotive clears automotive clears don't come in very small packages where you know it's you know ten dollars to go out and get some automotive clear until you buy the reducer the hardeners uh you know uh the clear itself and everything you're in quite a few dollars so to do a small project like this i probably wouldn't recommend that you go out and you know purchase automotive clear uh, this does a great job and i'm gonna show you how it works all right, so before I get started, one really important thing that I didn't mention, I know you can't see what I'm doing here off camera, but I'm wearing a respirator. A lot of times people think just because, you know, it's paint in a can, you don't need a respirator. You want well-ventilated area and you want a respirator. So I'm going to be putting my respirator on now, so I'm not going to be able to talk to you, but what I want to do is I'm going to do about three light coats. Here we go. All right, so you want to shake up your can really well for about a good minute or two. Now, that's the first of three light coats that we're going to be putting on here. And so what I always like to do is I like to read the labeling on the can. It doesn't even matter if I used it before, just to refresh my memory for dry times, uh, you know, and how it's supposed to be applied. So in this case, we're about one to two, maybe three minutes in between coats, and that's our second light coat. Now, what you want to make sure is that you're not getting any kind of buildup between the tape border you have on and the guitar because the clear can lay down in there and create a lip and or run down behind the tape. Okay, now this is our third coat and we're all done. All right, we're gonna let that set up for about an hour. We'll come back and see what it looks like. Well, there you have it, the finished product. Well, there you have it, the dead man's hand. Nothing really left to do now, except for hit it with some 1,500, maybe 2,000 to knock a couple pieces of dust off that got on it. I mean, let's face it, you're in a garage, it's gonna happen. But I happen to like it nice and smooth and like glass. So we'll hit it with a little bit of that, pull out the buffer, put a nice shine on it, and we'll call it a day. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to check out those links down below. Hit the bell so you get future notifications. A couple comments, good or bad, be much appreciated. With that, we'll see you in the next video.